Welcome to Ridge Life, I'm Tim, and today we're gonna to be treating our bees in the apiary for Varroa mites. Varroa mites are very destructive to your bees in your apiary. Now there's a lot of um, thought out there that uh, treatment free is the way to go and, and you uh, produce only bees that are Varroa resistant and uh, that, is, that is one common way of doing it. Uh, another way is just to try to make the bees you have as strong as possible to be able to uh, fend off the Varroa and, uh, and other pests like small hive beetles. And to make your bees as strong as possible, one of the things you can do is treat them for the pest you're trying to prevent. Now, small hive beetles, we, we use beetle blasters or beetle barns and the Swiffer sheets and the, the bees chase the beetles into those things and, uh, and that's where they get captured and die. Uh, another thing we do for the Varroa mites is to use Apivar strips and uh, you'll see that here on Ridge Life too. But today we're gonna be using oxacilic acid and we're gonna be using a vaporizer. It's an electric vaporizer. And uh, what that does is gonna kill the mites that are in this colony. It was cold last night here in West Tennessee. It was down in the 20s. Uh, it's warming up nicely here. Uh, it's gonna be uh, close to 60 today, so the bees are gonna be flying. So what I did, I came out here this morning and I sealed up the colony. Um, we already had the uh, mouse guard on here and we had a uh, entrance reducer. Um, I stuck sticks in all the uh, entrances uh, for uh, this colony and the other colony behind me and uh, what that did was I, I closed up all the ways the bees can come and go. So all the bees are in here right now for this colony and the one behind us. So we are going to treat them, or the whole colony, uh, and then uh, once they're done treated, we'll be able to release them and they'll go about their way. Um, this is not something that has to stay in the colony like the Apivar strips. This is a, a one time and done treatment. We've got the bees sealed up in here and you can see they're trying to move the stick in the hole to get out. It's a nice, it's starting to warm up above 50 degrees and uh, they're wanting to fly about 55. So we got up here and sealed them up and you can see they're trying to get out, moving that little stick there. That's closing up the only hole they have left. And there's one right here that must've got out before I sealed it up this morning. And uh, she's trying to get in. Um, but again, if there's a couple out, that's fine. You know, we have 99.9% .9 of the bees inside the colony. So uh, these couple little here that are out, they're not going to be uh, any worse for wear. Uh, we'll get 99.9% you know, of them treated and uh, we'll be good to go. We're going to be using 99.6% pure auxilic acid today in our 12 volt vaporizer. I purchased both the vaporizer and the auxilic acid from Amazon and I'll put a link to the description in this video to help you get yours. The vaporizer works very simply. It has a heating element here, it's called a glow plug, and you apply 12 volts from a car battery, lawnmower battery, motorcycle battery, whatever you have, and it heats up this aluminum uh, cup here. You fill this with your oxacilic acid, and it takes about two to three minutes for it to heat up. Now the heating element gets up to 250 degrees Celsius. The vaporizer is 18 inches long and has a four and a half foot long cord to reach to your battery. Before using your vaporizer for the first time, you'll want to put the appropriate amount of oxalic acid in there, plug it in and heat it up and see how long it takes to sublime or become a gas from a solid. Once you know how long your specific vaporizer takes to get all of the material to gaseous form, you'll know how long you need to leave it in for a good treatment of your bees. Oxalic acid can be very harmful to humans if you ingest it or get it in your eyes. So it's a very good idea to keep your smoker lit. That way you'll know which way the wind is blowing. You're not really gonna be using it for the bees, but you can know which way the wind's blowing and make sure you stay upwind of your vaporizer. It's also recommended that you wear sealed or goggle eyewear to keep uh, anything from blowing up into your eyes. Also recommend wearing nitrile, latex, or rubber gloves to keep any of the oxalic acid from getting on your skin. And finally, to keep your lungs healthy, it's recommended you wear a uh, gas and particulate um, respirator, or at least the European standard is a um, N95 mask. The standard treatment amount is one quarter teaspoon or one gram per brood chamber. And it really doesn't matter if it's an eight frame or 10 frame brood chamber, that's the standard. A quarter teaspoon or one gram per brood chamber. We're gonna do a dry run now to see how long it takes our vaporizer to get a quarter teaspoon to gaseous form from crystal. I wanna get my mask on, make sure I'm all protected here. I'm gonna get one quarter, one level quarter teaspoon. 
Now that we've got one quarter teaspoon in our vaporizer, we're going to connect the terminal and start our stopwatch and see how long it takes to get till it heats up and then get all of it vaporized. Go ahead and connect, let it start heating up, and I'll go ahead and hit start. You'll see how long this takes. All right, we can see it's already starting to melt and to vaporize. I'm making sure that I'm staying upwind of it. That's blowing that way. You can see my tray's not level, but it is starting to really, so it took about a minute for it to start to vaporize. I'm stepping back now since it's starting to, wind's starting to really blow around, but it's taking a minute to vaporize. And now we're at a minute and 25 seconds and it's really starting to get out of there. So we're right at four minutes. Looks like it's stopped. I'll, I'll disconnect the power. Just a reminder that the whole shaft gets hot here. This cup gets 250 degrees Celsius. Uh, don't want to touch anything metal on your vaporizer. So it took about a minute for our vaporizer to heat up where it took it from a solid to a gas. Again, uh, it took us about three more minutes to vaporize all of our quarter teaspoon, that's one gram. So if you're gonna be doing two brood chambers and you're gonna do a half a teaspoon, it's probably gonna take a lot longer. But for me, that's what I need today. We're gonna to wanna to seal our hive as good as possible. It doesn't have to be airtight, but we don't want a lot of that vapor getting out. We want the treatment to get on the bees. Now, right now there's a big cluster of bees here in the center of our hive. And uh, this, this uh, vapor is gonna go up, uh, infiltrate all of them and uh, give a good even treatment. But I do, I make sure all the holes, all the entrances are, are closed up, not perfectly sealed, but they're closed up. And we run screen bottom boards here year round uh, here in West Tennessee, at least I do in my apiary. So I want to put my bottom, uh, uh, my my varroa catcher in. Now they're going to die. These these uh, varroa mites are going to die, and I'll be able to uh, count them in uh, 48 hours, two days, to see what that percentage of death rate looks right looks like as far as loading of mites in my colony. We are ready to treat our bees with oxalic acid for varroa mites. We've got a quarter teaspoon ready. We've cooled down our vaporizer. We already know how long it takes for it to uh, heat up and start to uh, uh, vaporize the, the crystals. We also know how long it takes for a quarter teaspoon to get vaporized. So we're gonna apply crystals, spread it around a little bit. I'm gonna put our mask on. We know which way the wind's blowing. We're gonna connect our, get it hot. We're going to remove Get this back back on. We lost a few bees, but we'll be all right. Now we'll let that sit and start our timer. We got a few bees that escaped, but uh, they're trying to get back in. We don't see any others coming out. Again, a few a few getting out, not a big deal. I'm starting to see vapor come out around the seals now on our colony. Now we're going to let that continue for three full minutes. Then we're going to let it sit for three more minutes. Then I still see a little bit of vapor coming out. We've reached our four minute mark. So now I can disconnect power from our vaporizer. We're going to let it sit in here for three more minutes. That makes sure everything you know permeates all the cell, all the bees. And then we're going to pull out the vaporizer, seal it back up for 10 more minutes. All right, it's been about seven minutes. We can uh, pull out our vaporizer now. Again, we're going to keep it sealed up for 10 more minutes. We can see that all of the uh, oxalic acid was vaporized. Now we can treat our second hive. Again, I'm gonna get a quarter teaspoon level. Get a quarter teaspoon level added to our vaporizer. Get that smoothed out there. Now that I've got my PPE on, we're gonna go through the same process again. We'll power it up. Uh, one minute for it to heat up, about three minutes for it to vaporize. Turn the power off. 
Give about three or four more minutes to let everything stabilize inside. We'll pull it out and then keep it sealed up for 10 more minutes. Now that we got it in, we'll start our timer, wait for it to be completed. Now that we know that it's doing its job and all the vapor's coming out, let's set back up and we'll go over some of the uh, points of treating your bees with oxalic acid. So what is oxalic acid and why are we adding it to our bees? Uh, well, it's a crystal, it's a crystalline form, and it's found in peanuts, rhubarb, spinach, uh, sweet potatoes, leafy greens. It's what gives uh, those things their bitter taste. When you heat oxalic acid to 215 degrees, it becomes a crystal. When you heat it to 315 degrees, that's when it becomes a gas. So how does oxalic acid kill mites? Well, we really don't know. We do, we, do, we do know it does a very good job of it. We believe it goes through the pads of their feet or maybe under the scales, gets in their bloodstream. And of course, it being an acid, it takes them right out. You don't wanna treat your bees below 37 degrees Fahrenheit. It's just too cold. But once it gets above 37 and no, no high temp limit, you can treat your bees with oxalic acid. You may be wondering, can the varroa mites become resistant to uh, oxalic acid? Well, oxalic acid is a poison. It kills the mites. Uh, it kills them very, very effectively. It's been used for over 20 years in Europe. When is the best time to treat your bees for varroa mites? Well, oxalic acid kills phoretic mites. Those are the mites that are living on the bees. It doesn't do anything to uh, mites that are in the brood. So whenever your colony is, has the least amount of brood is really the best time to do it. Of course, during the winter time, you have very little brood, right? The queen has slowed her uh, egg laying production. You just have a lot of bees and those bees live a long time, right? Those are six month bees living throughout the winter. So when you uh, have a high mite count on a uh, colony going into the winter, treating them uh, between Thanksgiving and Christmas is a really good time. The temperature is above 37 degrees in the daytime, hopefully, and you can kill out 95, 98% of those uh, mites on that colony. Another good time is when you've captured a swarm. Uh, you really don't know what those bees have when you bring them into your apiary. Um, once you, that swarm catch, that, that new colony uh, has started uh, laying eggs on the, um, on the frames, it's another good time to treat them with oxalic acid. Another good time is when you've completed a split and you've removed a lot of the cat brood. Um, there's hardly any brood in there. Great time to treat for varroa mites with oxalic acid. When you purchase a package of bees in the springtime and you're installing them in your hive, another good time to treat with oxalic acid. You may be asking about tracheal mites. You know, we're, we're specifically treating for varroa mites here. Um, one item to note is uh, people who use oxalic acid to treat varroa mites have not reported instances of tracheal mite infestations or really, really bad problems. So it could be another uh, a form of treatment. We don't really know yet. Instead of doing an alcohol wash, you can use an OA treatment to find out what your mite load is. Um, do a regular OA treatment, stick the sticky board uh, under the colony, and what drops on the second day will give you a, a good indication of 95% of your uh, mite load. Now remember, 80 to 85% of your mites are in the brood. Uh, so when you're doing it when there's a high brood count, you'll pretty much know with a 95% certainty what your loading is in that colony. You've probably heard of other treatments for varroa mites like uh, apivar strips. Now apivar strips, you know, you're gonna spend 30 to $50 on uh, apivar strips. You're gonna insert them down in there. There's a long time they have to be in there. You can't have honey supers on. Um, so the treatment and the how long you have to wait before you can put honey supers on is a long time as well. Um, this OA treatment is very, very economical. The vaporizer doesn't cost very much. You're going to look at the Amazon link I'm going to put in the description. You're going to see this very, very cheap. Uh, the amount it costs for the, uh, the oxalic acid itself, very, very cheap. You're going to pay yourself back compared to using a Napovar strip in one or two uses. These bees are ready to get in and out of their colony. Um, we've gone through the full treatment. They've both been sealed up for 10 minutes. We're going to unseal them, let all the bees out. We're gonna leave the uh, bottom boards in there, those white boards. And we're gonna come back in two days. We're gonna check our mite load, see how many have dropped down, just to let us know exactly where we were going into winter with our mites. I keep the top front entrances closed up. Uh, I just leave the sticks loosely in there so air can go out to, for, for moisture control. I do leave the, the back top entrance uh, partially open though. And then of course we'll pull off the, uh, the stick out of the front and we'll get our mouse guards back on. Switch this over to a medium entrance. 
Again, we'll come back with the mouse guards later. Switch this one back over to a medium entrance. Well, there you have it, everyone. There's a, an OA treatment of our two colonies in our apiary. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed that. If you liked what you saw, please hit the thumbs up for this video. Subscribe to Ridge Life. If you haven't already, hit the notification bell to be notified anytime a new video comes out on Ridge Life. And uh, don't forget to check the links in the description uh, for your vaporizer and your oxalic acid if you want to get those off Amazon. We do get a little bit of a commission. It's no extra charge to you. Amazon uh, takes that extra themselves. So we do appreciate that if you do purchase it through our Amazon store, through those links in the description. So until next time, I hope everyone has a blessed day and go Ridge Life.